Small disclaimer for this video, my throat is incredibly sore. We're going through this video with some hot chocolate. Honestly, also kind of festive. Also, no, I need to turn the camera around because you do have to see my view from where I'm sitting. It's been snowing and it looks like this magical winter wonderland slash Monet picture. This dish, this cup, nothing matches. It's a shame with the road right there, but uh, I am in love with this view. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Mary and today I am going through the tattoos that I got in 2022. I've been doing these videos since 2016. Granted, they weren't as informative back then as they are now, and I didn't even do b-roll when I started doing them. I just posted static pictures, so hopefully they're a little bit more exciting now. I'm going to talk about the different tattoos I got in terms of motif, in terms of placement, thoughts behind them, pain, etc. Um, so this is the one annual video that I do that is completely unrelated to sustainability. Tattoos have been a passion and hobby of mine for many years and a lot of you guys seem to like it when I talk about them too. So instead of sort of scattering small bits of information everywhere throughout the year, I just thought why not sit down and have a chat about it and then we can just vibe and chill and I can go over all the different tattoos that I got and we can end up with sort of like a gradual progress series, which is the plan. So. This year, I didn't get a lot of tattoos. I did have overall three appointments. I was supposed to have four. I'll get back into that. I didn't have a lot of tattoos, mainly because I moved into a house, which means that you get a lot of new expenses and there's a lot of things you have to pay for. So that's like one aspect of it, not wanting to spend a lot of money on tattoos when there are so many other things that I have to spend money on. Another aspect was that I've been traveling quite a lot this year, especially during like the summer autumn period. And I've been wanting to go to the spa when I travel or go to the beach or go swimming in general. And you cannot really do that when you're newly tattooed. Anyway, I tried something completely new this year, which was that I have postponed an appointment indefinitely until I feel like I'm in the right mind place to get that tattoo. So I was supposed to get a big stomach piece done in October, but if you have watched one of my latest videos, my life is a little bit in turmoil right now. Not like completely chaotic and everything because everyone is fine, no one is angry, but Jens and I did split up. I am moving out of the house, we are selling the house, etc. And I didn't want to get a big piece like that during a time where so many things are changing and so much is happening because I fear that would forever make me think of that part of my life and that situation and that feeling. And I really didn't want that to happen because it's actually going to be a celebratory piece about witch burnings and feminism. And it's sort of like an homage to all the clever and amazing women that I've known in my life. So we're waiting and getting it once I feel like in the proper mindset to do so. So perhaps there'll be a January, perhaps it'll be in the spring, I don't know, but it's going to be next year at least. But without further ado, let's talk about the tattoos that I did get this year. <laughs> when I get tattoos, I usually do this thing where I book an appointment for several hours and I get as many smaller things done as possible. This way I reduce the amount of plastic waste related to the tattoo and that's sort of like my main thing. Then I get a lot of things done rather than having like tons and tons of small appointments. To me, it's also better for healing purposes because then I can heal everything all at once and then I can go do my swimming, my exercise, etc. And that works out a lot better. So the first appointment that I did was like a whole day session in iron and ink in Ulberg. And I got a bunch of dumb stuff. So I have this folder on my laptop where I sort of save ideas and I write things down and just so I don't forget and I can revisit them and fall in love with the idea all over again if I've forgotten it or sort of just validate or reconfirm that this is something that I want. So I've had a couple of pieces in that folder for a long time. For instance, E.T. in a summer hat, like E.T. in his fancy getup. E.T. is one of my favorite movies of all time and I've loved that image of him in, in Giddy's closet for ages where he's in his wig and his little hat. And I, it's, I don't know why I keep saying like he, because in the movie he's a he, but really we, we don't know what E.T. identifies as though. This hot chocolate is amazing. So I got a little outline of E.T. in the summer hat with the wig and it makes me so happy to look at this tattoo. I'm also doing this thing right now where I'm sort of overlapping 
tattoo motifs a little bit because I think that looks really cool. I don't plan on doing that consequently, but I think it looks cool here and there to sort of overlap them a little bit. So that's sort of what I've been doing. And this was on my thigh. It was very minimally painful. It was on the outside of my thigh, or like on top, leaning towards the outside, which is a very great place to get tattoos. I've gotten a couple on the inner parts of my thighs and that stings. That's not as fun. This was great though, no, no notes. Then I got two pasta tattoos for the main reason I love pasta. Sometimes things aren't that deep. <laughs> pasta on my legs simply just as a filler, uh, sort of leaning towards the back of my legs. I have tons of like these small gaps in between my tattoos everywhere. So I thought it could be pretty funny and cool to put a little fusilli in there. So that's what I did. And then I have a fork with some spaghetti on it, on my leg as well. And it's just because I love pasta. Also very minimally painful, they are on my legs and again on sort of like the more tough skin, not like the super fine skin. So this was also completely fine and it was all just fun and games. <laughs> Around my foot or sort of like leaning towards my ankle, I also got two pieces. I got a chain in the shape of a heart. This is an homage to an aesthetic I would absolutely have died for when I was 15 years old. In many ways, I think some of these tattoos, especially the ones that has like a little bit of like this emo edgelord energy, it's mainly a nod to how much I think I would have been the coolest person. If I looked at me, if 15 year old me looked at me now, I would have died. Um, so we need to do something for her. We need to do something for the 15 year old. I also got a cloud with some lightning and some eyes with several pupils and I think it's cool. It cannot all be super meaningful. At least not to me. At least I think it's really fun to just have some fun things to look at. I've never regretted a tattoo in my life before anyone asks me. And um, sometimes you regret a placement or the, t the time in your life where you got it or you sort of regret the style or would have done some things differently now. And I have like the placement issue. Sometimes I look at myself and I go, why did I do that there? It's an awful place to put that. Then we work around it. But I've never regretted getting something done. And please keep this in mind while we move on to the next tattoo that I got because I got my fingers tattooed again and I have been wanting to get this done for such a long time. I think it's some of the coolest things in the whole world. I just, I was so excited. I looked at my hands for two weeks straight. Um, I got hearts between my knuckles. Again, not really a deeper meaning to it. You, I do joke sometimes that it's sort of like you punch with a little bit of love. I, and that's not really it though. Um, I just think it looks so much fun. Um, I I love them. They did heal up a little bit uneven, um, but I guess that's mainly because you do use your hands and you move your skin quite a lot and in contrast to your legs where you don't really move, like your shin, sort of static, the skin. And your knuckles aren't at all. So they did heal up a little bit uneven compared to what they looked like when I got them. But I don't think I'll get them touched up because like one of the big issues here is that you will risk the ink bleeding out a little bit and then they will either not look like hearts or they will be bigger. And I don't want them bigger. And I, I honestly think the shape is really cool as they are now. Anyway, getting your hands tattooed in Denmark is actually illegal. Finger, your hands, fingers, face is illegal in Denmark. So obviously I didn't get them done in Denmark. The last appointment that I had, I had to do a touch up slash cover up. Or more like finishing something that I've been wanting to finish for a really, really long time. But the overall trauma of going back and getting my knees tattooed for the fourth time wasn't so attractive to me. So I've been waiting for a long time. So I got a new piece done on the outside of my thigh, anatomical heart with a knife into it. I've been wanting that for so long and then with some banner text, that's super awesome. It's a slightly bigger, very dark piece that I think works so, so well for the placement. And on top there's a banner that says Sauvage Superieur, Superior Savage. I think it's so much fun. <laughs> Again, we're not taking ourselves all that seriously and I honestly think that is an act of wellness on my part. A couple of years ago, I think it might have been two years now, I got my spider web tattoo on my knee touched up because the first artist that did it, it didn't, it doesn't, it didn't really make sense both proportionally as well as the overall stylistic choices that was made. So on my other leg, on my other knee, I have my Bulbasaur tattoo 
the Bulbasaur tattoo that I love, that I got because I could name all first generation Pokemon in under one minute. I love that tattoo. I think it's so much fun and I love Bulbasaur. He's the best starter. I have no regrets about Bulbasaur. I do, however, I've been really wanting to get the same spider web design underneath him so the knees match a little bit better because as a result when I got the first cover up or like the first spider web tattoo touch up that knee was suddenly a lot darker than the other knee and it just looked asymmetrical and off balance and I didn't really like that so now I got spider web underneath Bulbasaur as well and as it has been the case with the previous three appointments with my knee this sucked it sucked so badly I cannot stand getting my knees done, but I think it looks so cool and I'm so happy that I went through it. So I started getting the piece on the thigh done and then we moved on afterwards to the knee. And I did actually use a little bit of a numbing cream, but I think my numbing cream might have been too old or expired or something because it worked for around 15 minutes and then it didn't work anymore. And the thing is, then you feel the pain even more. Then it's even more uncomfortable, so I shouldn't have done the numbing cream whatsoever. I don't recommend it. They, it can also mess with the healing process of the tattoo and the skin feels a little bit off and weird to the artist. So if you can do without numbing cream, I definitely recommend it. And I know a lot of artists recommend that as well. At least the artists I work with often say very honestly that, you know, it makes the skin feel different and the result can differ if you use the numbing cream. It, at least that's a risk we're taking. So overall I've used numbing cream a few times and it's been okay um, but here I just really really regretted using it because when it came back the feeling it was so much worse and we were I think we were 20 minutes into the tattoo something that would take at least an hour and a half and I told my artist I don't think I can do this. I got dizzy and I got nauseous and it was awful and I walked around for a little bit and I had something to drink and then we finished it, but it was just, it was so uncomfortable. The entire process of which was awful. Um, but that was no fault of the artist. She did an amazing job. I was just so over it <laughs> at that point. Something that I often experience is that I'm going into the appointment super strong and, you know, great endurance, great stamina. And then all of a sudden you just absolutely plummet to the ground in terms of tolerance and you have no pain tolerance left and then everything just hurts and you don't want to be there anymore and that that balance is very very delicate in my situation so all of a sudden i just i was just so over it but i'm so happy that i actually got through it and didn't have to go back to complete it very good four times is enough Four times is enough. Those were all the tattoos that I got this year. I got some touch-ups, I got some new fun things and uh, not really anything with a huge deep meaning to it. The tattoo that would have had the most meaning this year would have been the stomach piece, which I will be getting next year. But there's a lot of meaning behind that one, which is also why I want to give it the respect it deserves and not sort of taint it with anything that's happening because of my personal situation right now. So I wanted to stand on its own, if that makes any sense. Anyway, those were the tattoos that I got and I hope you liked this video. And let me know if you got any bomb tattoos this year or if, if there's anything you kind of want to get. Or if you don't have any tattoos but you kind of want something, let me know what you want. I think we should share ideas, that's super cool. So uh, that was it for this video. Happy holidays, you guys. And uh, I hope to see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves until then. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.